With respect, sir. Don't you think this search will be easier in the daylight? Indeed, sir, it may be, but one night is all that is required for a slave to be relocated. I must do what I can. Good evening. As you may know, we are here to search for runaway property. This institute has been rumored to be housing such property. Now, if we happen to find any, those responsible will be found and possibly even jailed. However, should any of you cooperate, we will be lenient towards you. Perhaps even let you off, folk. I don't know what you heard, but I can assure you that we are hiding nothing. Then we won't mind, sir, if I search this room. Help yourself. Are you hiding any slaves, boy? Sir. Are you sure? Yes, sir, I'm sure. Thomas, I thought you would be here. Yeah, well, trains are about the only thing I enjoy from the north. Why is that? Trains are magnificent machines. When I come down here every so often and see one go by, their speed and power just, it never ceases to amaze me. And just looking down the train track, isn't that a pleasurable feeling? I think I can kind of get a bit of what you're saying. And the idea of a sure path. The train always knows where it's going. And that's comforting. Well, you could say that's the north. We are progressive, we're moving forward, and we're going to do everything we can to do that. In all seriousness, do you really think the northern way of life is God's calling for us? Honestly, I haven't really thought much about it. Well, I understand. I just wish God's calling would be a little clearer sometimes. In fact, that's the reason I came down here, because I feel bad about lying. Lying to the slave catcher last night? Yeah. Honestly, I feel like this case of lying is easily justifiable. I mean, take Rahab, for instance. She lied to protect God's people and was then rewarded for it but because of her faith. But Rahab was lying in a pagan city that God was going to destroy. We lied to our Christian brothers and defied Christian authority. I would hesitate to call them Christian brothers if you want to judge them based on their actions. But, honestly, when it comes down to it, with this new law the federal government's put in place, forcing us to return slaves to their owners down in the south, I can't see myself following those rules. And by you uh, even protecting this man now, you're defying the federal government. I thought it was the right thing to do, but I didn't expect this level of civil disobedience. I don't know. My conscience is really torn. Does that mean you're not going to be able to go tonight? No, no, I'll go. I'll keep my word. But I'm not so sure if it's God's calling for me right now. That's all I'm trying to convey. No, no, I understand. That makes sense. Well, hey, it's almost time for dinner. We should head up to campus. The others are waiting for us. Steven? This is Paul. Paul? Yes? Steven. How do you do? How is this gonna work? 
We got about seven miles right now to the next stop. We're gonna make our way through the woods, try and be quiet as best we can. I don't know where that slave catcher is right now, but we're gonna have to try and make sure we stay out of his way. Does he need anything before we go? If you don't mind, Steven, could you uh, tell us your story? Um, yeah, sure. Well, it was the Saturday before Easter, I believe, two months ago. I escaped with two other slaves with me. And we went up to Tennessee. We got to where we were initially going, but we got spotted and they caught the constable. We tried to get away, but the other two that I mentioned before, they got shot. And I don't know if they survived because I just kept running. And that was when I ran into another free black man. And he hit me. And that was pretty much how I started my journey to go up north. That's where we were initially going, but that's a really incredible story. Why? Why would you do it? I mean, was your master bad to you? Uh, actually, the thing is, the master was pretty, pretty tame. But he still owns like an animal. Being a man, I'm gonna be free. That's drinking gore. My symbol of freedom and hope. It's all that I have. My mother was whipped to death and my father sold to a, another plantation, so without that, what else is there? Turn the line after that. You know, there was a song we used to sing back on the plantation. Follow the drinking Lord. Follow the drinking Lord. For the old man is waiting to carry you to freedom. Follow the drinking Lord. Well, uh, I'm from the South, Virginia. My fathers had slaves and, well, they sang that song too. Augustine presents a contrast between the city of God and the city of man and argues that there is an antithesis, a battle between the forces of the world and the forces of righteousness. There is no middle ground. Exactly. In the South, you seem to think that your public institutions of slavery are somehow separate and apart from the laws of God. A separate kingdom with its own rules. But he shows that to be impossible. You forget the fact that at the beginning of each of his letters, Paul calls himself a slave of Christ. How can the institution be wicked if he embraces it? I'm sure he was only speaking metaphorically. What about Galatians 2.4? This matter arose because some false believers had infiltrated our ranks to spy on the freedom we had in Christ Jesus and to make us slaves. How can you justify slavery in that light? Now the passage, I am sure, is metaphorical. But on a deeper level, how can it not be clear that central to the story of the scriptures is that the hierarchical, governmental, and familial God rules us all. The state is an authority over the civil realm. The man is an authority over his wife, children, and servants. All have their own place wherein to serve God. Paul, you forget Colossians 3.11, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free. But Christ is all, and in all. 
I do not dispute God's calling to live for Him and be forces of restoration, but I cannot see that calling is as you describe. The scriptures constantly proclaim our freedom in Christ, and the Southern culture seems to put the law and traditional order above Christ. Let me show you what I mean. In a Southern town, what is at the center? Well, we really don't have a lot of cities, but in most towns, I suppose it would be a church, courthouse, and maybe a library. Exactly. All those structures are symbols of tradition, of heritage. In the South, you do not want change. You want to stay the way things have always been. Well, what about your northern cities? Take New York. Did you go to the World's Fair? I did, and it was splendid. A steel and glass symbol of the future, of progress. Progress? Perhaps. But did you not help but notice that the center of the fair was shaped like a church with very technological improvements being the place of papist relics? What are you insinuating? Maybe the North is guilty of idolatry and industry and progress and unceasing pursuit of some vague future. These mechanical achievements are wonders! They will help end evils like slavery. Perhaps, but what about the people displaced from their country farms, thousands of them, and forced to work in the factories for a wage unable to actually produce anything of value? You've got a point there. People don't always have satisfying jobs. But at least they're able to produce more and improve their quality of life. We have a responsibility to care for others. The Christian wave of the future is irreversible. Will we ever free the slaves with the South's hesitation? Yes, but we cannot do it immediately. That would result in economic dissolution and despair and collapse, and the South would leave on the paper free, but in practice, far worse off. You can't change things quickly. There you go again with your appeals to tradition. How can you ignore this? What could be worse than this abomination? In the North that you so elevate, aren't European immigrant slaves and everything but name only, working in the factories with unsafe conditions, even children? They aren't slaves. They can leave whenever they want. Can they? Or are they enslaved to the need for a wage? Well, even if they are somewhat like slaves, at least by hard work they can raise themselves up and become the owners themselves. Can southern slaves do that? Excuse me, shouldn't we be working on our assignment with Dr. Andrews? Well, no! Because all of the southern slaves' needs are provided for, unlike in the north. What good are provided needs without freedom? God's law above man's law. God's law above man's. Our motto is pro Christo et patria, not just pro Christo. We are called to obey our magistrates unless they make us sin. Of course, but don't we have a responsibility to help the poor and defenseless? How can that not apply to this man that's trying to escape to his freedom? I grew up on a plantation in Virginia. I remember the beautiful cherry trees with their pink blossoms and swimming in the cool, refreshing creek. You know, my father was a real man. He took care of his family. He took care of the families of his slaves, too. He wasn't no tyrant or evil slave master like so many of them are. He was a kinder and gentler man. And I looked up to him. I thought I was gonna be a farmer just like him, but he had other plans for me though. He insisted I go up north to go to college. and I'm beginning to see why. Why is that? Well, Stephen, I must admit, 
I haven't really been thinking of you as a person. I was always taught and I always thought that people like you were lesser, that they were property, and now I find that, frankly, I find that discomforting. And I always thought Northern capitalism and industrialism destroyed something beautiful and elegant and simple in the agrarian lifestyle. But now I'm beginning to see why that doesn't work. And I understand why my father is trying to get us away from that lifestyle. And while I struggle with thinking of you as an equal still, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the way I've treated you, for the way my... I'm asking your forgiveness. Well, brother, I forgive you. Yeah. In my life, I've dealt with a lot of oppression, and I realized that it's easier just to, to let go than to try to hold on. And Thomas, I'm sorry for the way I've, the light that I've portrayed the North in. While I still don't agree with everything the abolitionists do, and I think that they're flawed in their practices, they've gotten me, and you've gotten me, to reconsider my position on the Southern way of life. I've always thought that was just the tradition, and God's intended way for us to live, but now I've really been challenged to rethink that. So, once again, I'm sorry, and thank you. I'm sorry too, Paul. I've always viewed the North in a very prideful way. I've been so tied down to the future and progress that I've I've put a lot of blame down on the South for everything that's happening and forgetting about everything else that I'm doing as well. I'm sorry. You guys are here.
You're awake. Yeah. Did they take him? Yeah. And he said that he would most likely come back, probably fine us a thousand dollars. I know. I know we should have seen it coming, but how did he find out? It's not our fault. He found the guy at the next stop before we got there, and he even found Professor Andrews' letter that he sent. Everything just kind of worked against us. It was good that we did, even if it didn't pan out the way we'd hoped. I just feel sorry for Stephen. So do I. I just... I don't understand why God would let that happen to him. I mean, I know everything works for his glory, but it just seems right now that all of our work was in vain. Father, Father, help us. Life is so brief, and our days are so short. And I suddenly don't know what to do while I'm alive. We want to say that we want to live for your glory, but evil is everywhere. I have it up here in the north. Paul has it in the south. It's, it's everywhere. And Lord, I don't know if there's anything that I can do about it. I'm just a student. But you, you can do all things. Father, you are in control of everything. If you won't let me understand such things, at least, at least let me know what I need to do. Did I do wrong? Have mercy, Father, have mercy on us all. <laughs> and use me. Use me, Lord, I am willing. And teach me what I need to do in this accursed world, and, and let me suffer. Let me suffer for this cause, for these people. Let me release the slaves. Give me strength, Lord. Let me, let me free them both from their bondage and from their sin. I'm willing to suffer. Let me suffer. Day by day, we are headed for the unknown. How things are going to work out, we cannot tell. But we have to go forward and try to make the best of what comes. We have to take the first step or the second step. We cannot see very far, but we can see that far. It takes courage to take the first step or the next step, but we should take it hopefully and faithfully and in the confidence that as we go on, things will work out so that we can keep on. Thomas, Paul, welcome. Good morning. How are you? Been better? Pretty good, except my neck hurts a little bit. I'm sorry about Stephen. You tried. We must trust in God's mysterious ways. I know. I know God hasn't forgotten Stephen. Or any of the other slaves for that matter. And neither will I. We'll keep fighting. For change. For change in ourselves. Good. Good. 
I believe you will.